Greetings everyone and welcome back to the John Audio Tech Show. What I want to do today is close out this amplifier project. The JAT501 amplifier as I'm calling it. As you know, I've spent a lot of time on this. I started back in August 2018 and you know I wasn't going to rush through it or anything like that so I took my time. And if you followed the series, you know I went through the design of different stages of the amplifiers and ran into problems made changes and I think ended up with a pretty good amplifier here so in this video I want to provide a schematic a bill of materials and a few other closing notes about the amplifier if you want to build this eventually I want to provide pre-made boards for anybody interested in that but for now, I just want to close this project out because there's a whole bunch of other projects I want to get into and other things I want to do here on the channel. So, you know, we've got to move ahead. For now, I've connected the amplifier to these big 15-inch subwoofers. And I'm going to play a base wave file through it. The base wave, as I call it, it's just an undulating uh, base signal. And uh, I've never really powered these things with anything more than a few watts, maybe 20 watts. And with this power supply, you know, I can turn this up to plus minus 32 volts. Uh, I think one of the measurements we got was like 93 watts or something from this. On a proper supply, this, pro this thing could probably put out up to 110 maybe 115 clean watts into a 4 ohm load but yeah I'll go ahead and get this set up to play the signal now with the camera the camera cannot record super low bass notes so you're probably going to hear distortion and you'll hear things rattling around in the room okay let's let it rip Crap, that's like a gentle body massage sitting in front of these subwoofers. Okay, well the amp didn't get that warm. I am using the TO220 version of these transistors. The actual amp will require these transistors, but it handled it pretty well. These two subs are connected in parallel. They're 8 ohms each, so it's a 4 ohm load. But yeah, if you saw that paper shaking, it was on the other side of the room, so you know, you're putting a lot of acoustical energy in the air if you can do that. One test I should mention is current delivery capability of the amplifier. I designed the amplifier to handle from 4 ohms on up. Now in the real world the amplifier has to deal with reactive speaker loads. So my criteria for testing that is to set the load resistance to one half the minimum value. So if the amplifier is set up for 4 ohms, I set this to 2 ohms. And then I put a sine wave in that clips so that I can see what my output voltage or the clipping point is at these flat peaks. So after running the simulation, I'm getting 28.38 volts on both peaks, exactly the same. At 4 ohms, I was getting 30.3 four or something like that and of course the amplifier is going to put out a smaller voltage because you're going to lose more in the amplifier because it's dealing with higher current but what you don't want to see is asymmetry develop in this waveform now keep in mind in this case I'm not talking about the power supply I'm not worried about the power supply current capability that's another subject I'm 
What I'm worried about is if my voltage amplification stage is delivering enough current to drive the outputs properly. So in the voltage amplification stage, I have the current source up here. What I did is I changed the current source to deliver less current, just as an example to see what can happen if the amplifier cannot deliver enough current under strenuous conditions. Okay, this is what you don't want to see. Now the amplifier is clipping at, uh, I don't know, probably like 17 volts. Well, if you have a 35 volt supply, you don't want to see the amplifier clipping at only 17 volts. And of course on the bottom it's not, it's going to about 28 point something volts. Because this transistor can pull this voltage down, it's not really limited as much as the current source would be. Because of course the current source is programmed to deliver X amount of current. So you can see when I change this current source to deliver low current, the voltage amplification stage is not able to deliver enough current to drive the outputs properly, and you get this weird asymmetric early clipping waveform. So if I set that back to the original value, we'll have good symmetrical clipping again. So I know this amplifier can deliver plenty of current even with a 2 ohm load. Again, I'm not saying you can run the amplifier at 2 ohms. It's just my criteria for testing the amplifier. Here's the page I printed off when I first started this project, the design goals I wanted to meet for making this amplifier. Let's see if I met those or not. First goal here was 50 watts of clean power before clipping into 8 ohm load. Design minimum linear class AB design. Of course, it's a class AB design. Yeah, we met that pretty easily. With a proper power supply, should be able to hit around 60, maybe 65 watts into 8 ohms. And uh, somewhere between 90 to 100, or even 110. And again, that all depends on the power supply, if it can deliver the current when driving 4 ohm loads. Next is unconditionally stable thermally and electrically. Yeah, you know, we had a big thing on that. Getting the amplifier stable, had those problems, and uh, did all those tests. So I'm very confident that the amplifier doesn't have problems with thermal or electric stability. Safe into 4 ohm reactive loads. Yeah, I've been through that. Current limit protection. You remember going back to that video, I decided to nix the current limiting on board. I will have connection points for an outboard type protection system. As Bob Cordell said, the best current limiter is no current limiter, so I'm not going to have it. Low distortion across the power and frequency band. Well, again, if you remember, I was pretty limited, especially at the extremes of the audio band in what I could measure using my computer. But at 1 kilohertz, which is an important frequency, because your hearing would be pretty sensitive to the harmonics of 1 kilohertz. I was measuring down to 0.004%. I would bet if I had the proper measuring equipment, you know, have the proper cabling and all the setup, and have the amp laid out on a professionally produced board, I would expect the distortion to be down around 0.001%. And again, I was limited at the frequency extremes, but I was very happy what I saw with the intermodulation distortion. It just was not an issue with this amplifier. Uses common parts, reasonable design. You know, like I said, when I kick this thing off, I'm not going for a super complex amplifier. I want to keep it relatively simple. I mean, it's not super simple. It still has 13 transistors. But I wanted to go with a minimal design, yet still have a good performing amplifier, and I think I'd have met that. Here is the schematic. I'll throw up an image in the video here, so you can see the schematic in its entirety. And at some point I would like to put the bill of materials in the schematic online where you can download it. Uh, 
Uh, next is a list of materials, or I mean a list of components, and what their function is in the circuit. And I think I fixed the mistakes. There were some mistakes in here. I think I got everything matched up with the schematic. Pay attention to the information down here. Next is the bill of materials. A few important notes before closing here. First of all, safety first. If you're going to be building a power supply, you're going to be dealing with line or mains voltages. Plus, the, there could be as much as 80 volts across the rails for the amplifier. I'm not a company with lawyers, so I have to give this disclaimer to build this or use the design at your own risk. This amplifier design is for you guys if you want it. You can tweak it. You know, I didn't go through every little part and tweak it for the best performance. You know, I just went with the design I thought would do the trick. I've met the goals, so I'm happy with it, but... It's an electronic device and could be modified endlessly to meet your needs. Use quality parts. You know, don't go on eBay and buy a bunch of crap parts that could be fake. You know, the amp may not live up to its performance. It might have a failure because of counterfeit parts. I buy all my parts I use in these projects at DigiKey or Mouser. And there's different levels of quality parts you can buy there as well, but generally you're not going to get stuck with a counterfeit part if you buy from those renowned dealers. This amplifier is designed to be used with a 50 volt center tap transformer. In other words, 25 volts on each side of the tap. Considering the transformer's load regulation, after full wave rectification and filtering, the power supply voltage could be probably around plus and minus 38 volts. Under load, it will depend on the transformer that you've used. You know, obviously a larger capacity transformer, you know, a transformer of higher current will not sag as much under voltage than a smaller one will. My criteria for selecting a transformer's volt amp rating for use with an audio amplifier is just to double what the amplifier power rating is. So if you use this amplifier with an 8 ohm load, take 50 or 60 watts and double it. So if you're only going to use the amplifier with 8 ohm speakers, just use a 100 volt amp transformer. Now, if you're going to use the amplifier with 4 ohm loads and you're going to drive it pretty hard, I would recommend going with a 200 volt amp transformer. Okay, well, that wraps it up for this project. I really appreciate you guys who hung in throughout the whole thing. It's been not quite a year and a half yet, but like I said, I wasn't in a hurry. But hey, finally got to the end of this one. Well, that's it. Thanks for watching. And on to the pile of circuits with that one.